Nick Hoffman is a seller of fine things. No, he doesn't work at Rochester's or a high-end audio retailer. The things he sells are not even new. But they are mass-produced, they are handcrafted beyond what would be economically viable by modern mass production standards. As part of his mission to find just the right hustle to meet his brand of clothing requirements, my friend told me about his plan to use his high school woodworking skills to make cupboard doors and kitchen renovations. He told me he could see himself making 8,000 grand a week from this. Even without specifically investigating the market, I can tell you he is wrong. His plan is based on a fundamental misunderstanding of the world we live in. It is a stubborn, stained misunderstanding that the pre-wash and the washing machines of real-life experience cannot remove from any of us. Yes, we are all stained by this misunderstanding. We believe that hard work leads to prosperity. We believe that craftsmanship is valued. Nick Hoffman used to work as a restorer of antique furniture, but now he just buys and sells, and he sells the only way that people want to buy, cheap. From years of antique furniture restoration, Nick Hoffman learned that people weren't prepared to pay for the labor it took to take a fine piece of furniture and bring it back to life. He learned that even if now Jesus stood before the corporation like souls of men and raised Lazarus up from the dead, the eyes of modern men would look back with the dead glint of skyscraper windows and say, yes, but can you do it again on a weekly basis with lower overheads? So now he just sells, and he sells the only way that people want to buy. Cheap. And in order for this to be a way of life, it means he must be buying even cheaper. Nigga Hotmail is an Afrikaner. Historically, the Afrikaners did not believe that they could win a direct war against the British, and so they fought a tricky war. They did not attack the British in need lines, instead they became guerrilla warriors. Broke through the dead of night barriers, chipped away at their supplies, their strategies, their minds. But the pride of the empire would not be broken. At first battle, the dragon merciless within them was awoken. The British commanders formed a plan. In unity, their lips formed a word. And attrition was the word spoken. Unable to catch the poor guerrilla warriors, the British burnt the fields that fed the boys and put their women and children in concentration camps. Nick Hoffman moves amongst his own people and in order for him to be able to buy so many things so cheaply it means there must be a lot of boors out there flat broke and desperate for any cash they can get no matter how fine the item. It seems the boors have once again fallen victim to a war of attrition. It's tempting, isn't it? to look at the suffering of a former oppressor, race, and enjoy. But aren't we the same as them? With local manufacture unable to match the cheapness of what is made in Chinese factories, aren't all of our fields being burnt? With less and less good quality jobs, how much longer before the freedom to be dirt poor is a legacy not much better than a concentration camp for our children? When Condoleezza Rice, one of the most respected black women in the world, had a visit scheduled to China, Chinese blogs were filled with racist postings expressing Chinese disgust with her. Some went so far as to call her a crocodile, a chimpanzee, a piece of rotten meat, something dogs will find hard to eat. They say China will rule the world, become the new empire. I say, if so, how well do you know your future masters? And how much love do they have for Africa? For Africans. Xenophobia is the word for the fear of China and the Chinese. And yet, there is no word for the fear of lions. I suppose the fear of lions doesn't need a word. I suppose sometimes it's just natural to fear a thing that would devour you if it had the chance. Oh.